everybody, it's Ann Kaplan from Mom Me with my son, my amazing teenage, yeah. 13 Go year old teenagers. son, Elijah. <laughs> uh, we're broadcasting to you from Mom Me, your mama resource from conception to college. Wherever you are on your mothering journey, we are here for you. And this week, our theme is uh, sex. That's right, sex. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This could be a big, this could be an awesome idea or a horrible or a terrible idea. idea. We're going to find out here in a second. But today, specifically, this whole week we've been talking about sex, how to talk about sex with your kids, how to talk about where babies come from, how to talk about our bodies. Yesterday we talked about sex when you're pregnant, sex right after you've had a baby. And today what we're talking about is how to talk about sex with your bigger kids. I remember when I was like 10 and you... I, we were like eating at the dinner table. We were like trying to explain to everybody what sex was, and then no, it was because I was pregnant with Sky. And remember, it, and River asked you like, well, how uh, how do babies get made? And I said the whole thing, and, it, and you and Ma, you and Dad were just like, "Yep, well, okay." And River was laughing his butt off, He's and like, we just, <laughs> just turned sex with Dad. <laughs> We just turned to River and said, I don't know why you're laughing. Everything Elijah's saying is true. He knew the whole spiel. I did. So if you followed our video on Tuesday, you'll know that I told you, answer your kids' questions when they come up, honestly and frankly. And that's what we did with Elijah, yeah. which is why at the age of nine, he was able to completely explain sex to his seven-year-old brother when I was pregnant with our last kid. Don't tell him exactly too early because I heard from one of my friends is that their daughter... They told her like really early and then she went to school and told everybody. Well, that's true. That's That was a part of our conversation. Do you remember that every mom and dad want to yeah. have their own conversation? It's their mm -hmm. right and it's not our place to tell other people's kids. So that's a good caveat, good reminder. But today I want to talk to you guys about how to talk to your big kids about sex. So, you know, for me, what does it mean talking to your big kids? There's a line, I feel like, and every kid crosses it at a different time. But, you know, when kids are younger and you're talking about sex with them, what you're really talking about is anatomy. You're really answering questions about um, how does it work, where do babies come from, stuff like that. But there's a line, a developmental line that happens with our kids just naturally as they get older where they start thinking about sex as more than just an anatomy lesson. They start realizing that it might feel good or there might be reasons why people have sex besides trying to make a baby. And things get confusing because they know that it's possible to love someone without being married and things like that. And I remember several instances that showed me that you were getting to that age. Oh, yeah. And the first one I can think of is when we were at our friend Kathy's house, we were watching yeah. the movie Crazy Stupid Love, and there's a not even a sex scene, it's just like a makeout scene yeah. with Marissa Tomei and Steve Carell, and they were just kissing, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, what did you do? I, I, was, I was like, grabbing. my penis! <laughs> That's right, you grabbed your penis and started yelling, my penis, my penis! And so we had to stop the movie and we had a conversation saying, it's okay, nothing bad's happening. It just, just means that you're same excited. Thing, the same thing happened to Sky. He was just like, my penis, it hurts. Right, right. That but hurts. to me, that difference, that line that we're talking about is kids get, especially boys, boys get erections all the time, even when they're babies. And it doesn't mean anything sexual or emotional. It just is an anatomical reaction. Yeah. But there is a line crossed, and it was very clear to me when that happened with you, when you're having a, an erection because something is exciting to you. You're having an emotional or physical or, um, I don't know, arousal or excitement response to something outside of yourself. It's not just because, for whatever reason, randomly you got an erection. Mm -hmm. And those are really good signs to pay attention to, you guys. When your kids start asking you questions that are about sex, but not just about the mechanics of sex, when your kids start showing signs that things are exciting to them in a sexual way, you know, those are signs that your kids are ready to have a more nuanced conversation about sex. And it's really, really important to maintain all the stuff we talked about on Tuesday, keeping the door open, answering questions honestly, being frank, and answering their question, and not a whole lot more unless they're asking more questions. Use all of those tools, but let's talk about how to do that and things such as... What about having sex for pleasure? What about the fact that sex feels good? And contraceptives. Yes, we'll talk about contraceptives too, but 
What about the fact that sex is a pleasurable thing? And so that means that maybe you want to do it not just to make a baby, mm -hmm. right? So the conversation, I'm going to tell you exactly what we talked about with our kids when these kind of conversations came up. And I'm going to give a lot of credit to my friend Melissa, who was the one who explained to me how she talked to her kids about it. And I kind of adopted it and made it my own. But it makes a lot of sense and I think it really resonates for people. And this is what we've told our kids. Sex is, you're ready for sex when your head, your heart, and your body are all three ready. You have to have all three of those things ready or sex can be something that really hurts you. And that means that you have to be emotionally ready to have sex. You have to be uh, mentally ready for, to have sex and responsible enough to have sex. Mm -hmm. And physically, your body needs to be ready to have sex. That's why nobody at my age is having sex. Right. I well, hope. not voluntarily, probably. But um, we've talked about, between the two of us, we've talked about the fact of like, you might feel like you want to have sex. But are you sure that your head and heart are ready? Maybe right. it feels really good physically, the idea of having sex or being with a girl, or you see pictures what of are you a naked do woman or if a you're naked boy. If you're 14 or 16, what are you going to do with the baby? Right, exactly. Sense. Or just the emotional um, ramifications of having sex and how it ties you to someone emotionally through your head and your heart mm -hmm. that are um, feelings that are just not really, you're not ready for them. Right. So, you know, talking about those things in those terms have made it so that we can talk, have these nuanced conversations about relationships, marriage, sex, all of those things in ways that are very, very truthful and honest, but still give the same messages that we as parents want to say, which is you're not ready for sex just yet. That's and right. I hope you, you see that. And let me help you see that, not because I'm telling you you're not allowed or you're, you're not at a specific age or milestone, but because I want you to understand what the criteria are for being mm -hmm. ready and decide for yourself. And, and I think that a child with um, emotional intelligence, which our children have... Um, I do have emotional not just, intelligence. Not, our, not me, my children. I'm saying our children, all of us. Our children have emotional intelligence. And if you explain to them... Um, the things that need to be in place to be ready to have sex, most kids are able to recognize like, whoa, that's way above my pay grade right now. And that's good. That's enough. And you have those conversations and you build on them level by level. So let's talk about things when it comes to actual, real, legit, like concrete questions like porn. How about porn? Elijah, I would love for you to tell us the first time that you experienced porn. Um, I had a homework assignment and it was about uh, a Van Gogh painting and I was, I forgot the name of one and I was scrolling on the internet and it was all like, oh, a picture of, of um, like Mona Lisa or something that, like that and I clicked on it and it just took me to like this porn website and I was just like, wait, what, yeah. what is this? Well, and I think what's really, really interesting about talking about porn with Elijah is that even though we never told him porn is bad, porn is wrong, or because we don't believe that, but also we just never said anything like that to our kids or it's not allowed or anything, you've had a response to it of like, this just doesn't feel right to me. And what does that feel like to you? Or why do you suppose you think that? I don't know. I just, I feel like, I, I don't feel like, I feel like sex is more private. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't see why... You should show another person, somebody else mm -hmm. showing love to another person. Well, and can you share a little bit about what we've talked about when, when you did see porn and you felt maybe that you had done something wrong? What were some of the things that we talked about? You, you were all like, it, it's normal for somebody that age, my age. But you should also like understand that those women or men, they could... They're not, they are, I'm guessing they are in desperate for money or some mm -hmm. other It could be, or they could or... want to do that. But I think what the most important message that we need to give our kids about porn, and I know that we've talked about this, is what you see in porn is not real. Real. It's not real. That's right. And so the worst thing that can happen <laughs> for our kids to be watching porn is that they get an impression of what sex is supposed to be that isn't true it's not real and they have these false expectations of of what sex is going to be when they are old enough to have it and they do decide they're ready 
And it's not like that. It's just like any other movie. Why right? We've talked about yeah. that before. The things you see in movies and on TV are not real, and porn is no exception. And I think that was a really, really important point that we made. And then that is true. Some people are sex workers. They love it. They want to be in the sex industry. They want to do erotic uh, film and all that stuff. And more power to them. But there are just as many, if not more, people mm -hmm. who are doing those things because they're in a desperate situation or under duress. And watching those videos can sometimes promote that kind of treatment mm -hmm. to people that we don't want to be supporting. But um, I think it's really important to talk to your kids about porn because they're definitely going to see it, you guys. You can have every parental control you want on your computer, anything like that. There's a million gajillion ways that your kids are going to have access to porn, and it's for sure going to happen. So instead of putting our efforts into avoiding porn or, or making it impossible for our kids to see porn, have an honest, intelligent, m mature conversation with your kids about porn because there's no way to make it so that they can't see it. So also, also, I, I I'd like to say, even though uh, you could try to do that, I don't feel like porn is a bad thing. No, it's not. I totally agree with you, Elijah. It's normal and natural to be excited about those things and to want to seek those images out. So the other thing that we've talked to our kids about when it comes to sex in general, porn especially, and just these kind of adult things is that it's not right, it stinks that our kids are going to see porn. Not because porn is bad, but because it's just like we were saying, above your pay grade. To put you in a position where you're exposed to these things mm -hmm. that are that you're not ready for and expect you to have adult behaviors and reactions to them is not fair. It's not fair to put a child in an adult situation and expect them to behave like an adult. It's not it's not possible. We're giving you unfair expectations, and then what happens? You feel shame, you feel embarrassed, you right. feel like you've done something wrong. Where really what has happened that is wrong is not that you saw that or that you were in that mm -hmm. or that you behaved the way you did in that situation. It's the fact that you were in that situation to begin with. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there's not a whole lot we can do to protect our kids from that. So the best thing we can do is prepare them to handle it. And I have to say that I'm really, really proud of the way you've handled it with open honesty. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm going to get some rewards from yeah. this. No. Um, you know, open and honesty, responsibility, ethical behavior, you have a moral compass. Those are the things that I want for you. I don't care if you masturbate all day long until the cows come home and, and all that stuff. That's normal and natural and I don't, have, I don't have a dog in the race of what you do. I have a dog in the race of who you are and how you are. And you are doing great in that department. I hope so. so. Let's talk about one more thing that I think is really important, which is consent. What does that mean to you when I say consent? This is a new conversation, you guys. I, so I actually, you guys are witnessing firsthand. I don't know what consent means. <laughs> do you know what it means if someone gives consent to do something? Oh, like almost like permission? That's exactly right. So why do you think it's important to talk about consent when we're talking about sex? Well, honestly, I don't know. I personally don't know, but you I mean, like you haven't had yeah, personal experience. I, I, yeah, but I feel like in terms of sex, it means like you kind of need to ask your partner if they want to do what you want to do because if if you do that and they're not uh, like you said full full into it like mind body all that, it's it there could be you know, like effects but in the wrong direction that's right and you could be hurting that person and you don't even realize it right I think that's really powerful and the fact that you said that to me without me kind of saying what do you think yeah. Yeah. don't you, you know? know yeah exactly so it's so 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 important to talk to your kids about consent you guys we think that it's a um, maybe goes without saying or um, or that our kids, you know, only monsters don't, don't get consent. But there's probably been times in your life where you've been in a situation where even if you thought you got consent, you really weren't super clear about it. Or mm -hmm. there's ways to teach your kids consent even when, we're, when they're tiny, tiny babies. And we've talked about that on Tuesday, about letting your kids be the boss of their body, teaching them all the time, no means no. Like if we're having a tickle festival, the second somebody says no, yeah. you stop. Those are things that teach our kids from the very, very beginning the foundation of I'm the boss of my body and I get to say who, when, how, blah, blah, blah.
Right. And then fast forward to this teenage years, your kid is able to come up with on his own, what does consent mean? What do I need to do when I'm with my partner? I need to make sure that we're both all in and all right. that stuff. That's really, really powerful. And the last thing I want to talk about is masturbation. So your kids are going to be masturbating. That's totally normal also. And what have we talked about when it comes to masturbating? Um, you've talked about, like, once again, it's normal. Mm -hmm. But, like, um, almost, like, limit. Limit what? Like limit it, I guess. I don't know. Well, I don't think limit it, but just not limit, in, but like you need in, to be in privacy. Yeah, privacy. Like don't show you. you don't want to be around other. Right. Boys. Well, and that can be a little bit tricky when you share yeah. a bedroom, huh? You share a bedroom with somebody else. Yeah, that's too bad. We live in it. We're six people living in a three-bedroom yeah. apartment, so everyone's in each other's business. But that doesn't change the fact that yeah. masturbation is for private time. Yeah. And we've said that since we were little. What do I say to kids in our house when they're playing with themselves outside of their bedroom? It's like, that is for the bathroom or mm -hmm. in privacy. We say penises are for private time yeah. or vaginas are for private time. Yeah, so but, uh, you got to keep you gotta it private. Private, exactly. But is masturbation wrong? I don't think so. No. And is it bad for you? I, I don't think so. No, no, of course not. It's not. It's totally normal and natural. So don't be surprised if you guys start finding some crusty socks in your kids' bedrooms. And don't be surprised at, at how early this stuff starts. Elijah started noticing girls and getting erections that were more than just random physiology when he was very young. He was only nine years old. And I remember being like, oh, MG, I am not ready for this. But I guess, feel like, like it's because I knew I knew what sex was earlier than most people. Well, I think it's just hormones, babe. I mean, you knowing about when sex about sex sooner than your um, peers doesn't mean that you start growing pubic hair sooner than them, and that's what happened. Like Elijah just started going through puberty a little bit earlier than some of his friends, and so we had to navigate this stuff sooner than I expected. But just be ready. Pay attention to the signs. Don't be looking at the calendar and saying, well, he's only nine. This can't be possible. I don't, I'm not ready to talk about this yet. Well, too bad, you guys. Be prepared to have an adult, honest, nuanced conversation with your kids about sex and teach them the things that are the fundamental values, not rules, not laws, not don't do this, yes, do that, you can't do this, you can do that, this age, this time, blah, blah, blah. Take it deeper. Go deeper with your conversation to what is the message I want my child to have? Who do I want him to grow up to be or her to grow up to be? And how do I want her or him to feel about sex, about their body, about their partners, about all of that stuff? That's, right. That's If you're coming at your conversation from that perspective, you're going to be so much more effective. And you're going to be able to show up in a really genuine way where it doesn't. it's not uncomfortable for us to talk about this stuff at all. And I promise you guys, it anyone, on the subject. Yes, I exactly. Guess. But anyone who's wondering, I talked with Elijah before this video. I got his permission to ask him all the questions that I asked him. Consent. And consent, exactly. Very good. And and I we talked about what do you feel comfortable with, what do you not feel comfortable with. So what I'm demonstrating here, hopefully to you guys, is consent, like you say, but also the fact that if you treat your kids at the level that they're prepared to absorb, which is probably more than what you think, you are going to be able to have the kind of dynamic and relationship with your kids where you can talk about this stuff without any awkwardness or discomfort. And I feel so, so proud that even at the age, still at the age of 13, I have a teenager who is capable to come to me and talk to me about his intimate stuff without any shyness or, or weirdness and you know that might change over time everyone becomes more private I suppose as they get older and that might happen to you and it might not but you know that you can always come to me anytime and we can talk about anything mm -hmm. yeah I hope that's helpful for you guys thank you Elijah for being my guinea pig yeah you're the best I'm always a guinea pig yeah, that's right and I hope that you guys have enjoyed our sex topic this week Next week, we are completely turning the tables. We are going to be talking about anxiety because I wish I could tell you how many of my clients struggle with anxiety. It's for realsies. So we're going to be talking about anxiety. We're going to be talking about how to be bosses over our bodies, our minds, our families, our lives as moms. And Yay. that's what Mom Me is all about. And don't forget that if you know any pregnant people out there, share the event with them that's coming up on March 4th. An awesome virtual seminar I'm giving that is all about 
making your birth plan your own without fear, without anxiety, without judgment, without anybody pressuring you. So don't forget to share that event out there. I'll put a link in the comments below. And thanks, you guys. Have an amazing week. Yeah. Bye.